right, take out your Bibles tonight. I <clears throat> have a thought that I'd like to share with you from Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, I want to begin reading here, I want to read the first couple verses here tonight. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 1, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. And all God's people said... Amen, Lord, I pray that you would bless your word right here, right now. I ask you, God, in Jesus' name, that the word of God would penetrate our hearts, would lift us up into the heavenlies and cause us to live a life full of your glory. Thank you, God, for your goodness to us this day. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Honestly, just have a quick thought that I'd like to give you tonight. And, uh, and then I'd like us all to do something uh, before we leave here tonight. It's been a good day. It's been a great day. It's been a wonderful day. It's been an encouraging day. It's been a blessed day. And I thank God for His goodness. Uh, but our theme for this month is about a spiritual life. Do you have a spiritual life? That is a question that we all ought to contemplate. It is a question... Uh, that we all ought to be concerned with. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how rich, how poor you are. I don't care how young you are. I don't care what you're looking at on the schedule. This <coughs> Excuse me. What you're looking at on the schedule this week. Uh, but nonetheless, we ought to be concerned about living a spiritual life. Colossians chapter 3 is one of the premier scriptures in all of the Holy Writ that teaches us about living a spiritual life. And he boils it all down, look again at verse number 1, If we then be risen with Christ. Are you risen with Christ? As a matter of fact, today here we are on this Great and high holy day, this day of Easter, this day where we celebrate the resurrection. But it says, if ye then be risen with Christ. How is it that we are risen with Christ? Well, that's actually very simple. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, then the Bible says that He has quickened you, He has made you alive. And now you have been resurrected with Him spiritually. And I want to say I'm glad for the day that I was risen with Christ. And I want you to know that I'm still risen with Christ. I never have to worry about that going bad. I'm glad there's not an expiration date on my salvation. But he says here, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. I got a question, what are some of the things that you're seeking for today? The Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Matthew 6, 33, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And we are told in very clear terms here in verse number 1, to seek those things which are above. In the day and time in which we live, like Brother Kyle was teaching on just a few moments ago, there are many people that are seeking after men's applause. There are some people that are seeking after men's affections. There are some that are seeking after um, men's uh, uh, laudings and men's exaltations and, and uh, men's desires. They're looking and they are trying to vie. It is a competition out there 
where they are looking at a great many things. The Bible teaches, though, that we need to be careful about what we look at. Have you ever thought about your eye gate? Have you ever thought about the things that you take in? You know, the Bible says that the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. Goes right along with what he was teaching on a moment ago. Um, Job said it like this, I have made a covenant with mine eyes, why then should I think upon a maid? And yet the Bible has told us that if we would seek the Lord, uh, that we would find Him. What is it that you're seeking today? Are you seeking after things? Are you seeking after Things uh, that are concerned themselves with this world? Are you seeking after the applause uh, uh, and the authority and the affection of men or people? What is it? And the Bible has told us here plainly, seek those things which are above. Can I tell you this? We ought to be living with heaven in view. Seek those things which are above. Quit concerning yourself with the things of this life. Quit concerning yourself with the things upon this earth. We ought to be living with eternal things in view. And by the way, that's not the only thing uh, uh, that, is, uh, that is up there. Aren't you glad that Jesus is up there? Aren't you glad that there's loved ones that are up there? Aren't you glad that the uh, old saints are up there? Aren't you glad that the blood is up there? Aren't you glad that our hope is up there? Start living with your affection on the things of heaven. Amen. Seek those things which are above. And it tells us where that is, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. I've got a question. What difference does that make in your life? Isn't that the place where he's sitting right now? Isn't that the place of his prayer? Isn't that the place of his intercession? Isn't that the place of his supplications? Isn't that the place where he's calling out your name before his own father? Yes, that's where I ought to be setting my heart unto. It doesn't stop there, is it? I, it's interesting that people are wishing their life away today. They're wishing their life away today because of their plans. They're wishing their life uh, away because of uh, some, something on their schedule that excites them. They are wishing their life because of a party. They're wishing their life away uh, because of a game. They're wishing their life away. And we live from event to event and we have, we have forgotten how to live in the now. Uh, would to God that we could go back. Now, don't misunderstand me. I thank God for the things that we have today. But wouldn't it be good sometimes if we could just go back to where there was no radio and television and there was a wraparound porch with rockers on it and we could sit there and talk and we could sit there and enjoy fellowship and we could sit there and enjoy the moment. Recently, at a well-known sports event, uh, there was a, an intriguing pho photograph taken. And in the photograph, there was a, some, it was actually LeBron James who was getting ready to surpass um, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's all-time scoring record. And um, when he... Uh, came off of his defender and he turned around to shoot his shot. And the, at that moment, the photographer caught this shot and everybody in the stands has their phone out. Everybody in the stands is trying to take a picture and there is one man sitting on the front row with his arms crossed, with, his, uh, his, uh, with a smile on his face, no phone in his hand at all, and he is the only one that was in the moment. 
Can I tell you this? Learn how to live in the moment. Quit wishing your life away. Quit trying to say, oh, I'm glad that we're able to uh, revisit things sometime. And I'm glad for photographs. Don't misunderstand me. But if we're not careful, we miss the now. Because it is in the now that you're setting up um, uh, uh, things for your future. It is in the now that you are setting up your relationships. It is in the now that you are uh, laying up treasure in heaven. Quit acting like we're going to do it later. And really what we've done, we have technology to ourselves right out of the now to a point where we are pushing away the future and what we are doing instead of we think that we are doing something good but in reality what we are doing we are living our lives uh, trying to push things away and trying to keep them from our life in the present. We ought to be living in the now. As a matter of fact, this is backed up. It is reinforced in verse number two. He says here, set your affection. He, uh, earlier in verse number one, he said, seek those things which are above. But now he has set your affection. Isn't that really the problem? What things do we really love today? Do you love the Lord? I'm going to back up and ask you the question again. Do you love the Lord? That's a permeating question. That question searches the deep recesses of your heart. That question exposes all of the false things and all of the fleshly things and all of the failing things in your life, doesn't it? Do you love the Lord? Can we say like this first, I have set my affection on things above. The Bible has told us clearly in Matthew chapter 6, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The problem is, is because we have people today that call themselves Christians whose affections are not above. We are consumed. By the way, let me tell you this, it was... Noah, that caught God's eye, but no doubt there were good people alive. But there was only one whose affections were set upon God. Let me tell you what Rome needs today. Rome needs a people whose affections are, thing, are set on things above. Not on things on this earth. Not on things of anything else, but we are, our hearts are set upon the Lord. Look at what else it says. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. In other words, if you're going to love the Lord, you're going to have to de learn to, uh, to deny this whole world. Isn't that the whole message of Jesus Christ? Wasn't that the whole message of John the Baptist? Set your affection on things above. We're not done with the service tonight, but I'm going to end the message right here. Matter of fact, go ahead and cut me off if you would. I think we need to do a little bit of praying tonight.